While on the run from a criminal, a weak boy finds a legendary golden mask that gives him the powers of a god, forcing him to fight alongside other heroes to save the holy city. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Heroes of the Golden Mask, from 2023. While guarding the gates of the sacred city in feudal China, one of the guards notices a group of enemies approaching and sounds the drums, alerting Jiahao, the leader of the heroes in the Golden Mask. Before starting the fight, the man gives the chance to Kunyi to back down, saying that he can still spare him and his soldiers, but the villain refuses and says that he is there for the Jade Sword. Jiahao says that the city is sacred and that he cannot allow them to enter, but Kunyi replies that he only wants the sword and orders his men to attack, forcing the leader of the Guardians to put on his mask. With his power of telekinesis, Jiahao stops his opponents in midair, knocking them to the ground and throwing them away. At that moment, the other heroes in the Golden Mask appear and Jiahao leads the group, telling them what to do. When the enemies approach, Zhu transforms into a dog and runs up to them, taking the form of a snake and trapping one of the opponents. While Jiahao fights with his sword, Aesop uses his magic hammer to knock out his opponents. As the enemies approach, Li uses her bow and Zuma his magic spheres to repel them all. After Jiahao and his partners defeat most of his soldiers, Kunyi picks up a small statue and recites an incantation that turns the object into a half-zebra, half-crocodile monster. In addition to this monster, Kunyi also sends his winged tiger to help, leaving Li trapped. To save his daughter, Jiahao jumps in front of her and starts to fight the feline, but ends up getting distracted and is trampled by the other monster. Trying to save him, Li shoots an arrow right into the creature's face, causing it to jump off her father. Even though he's wounded, Jiahao asks the others to continue and Zhu transforms into a snake to hold the beast's jaw, allowing Zuma to knock it out with his spheres and Aesop to hit the monster on the head with a hammer. To finish off, Li lands a fatal attack and Jiahao manages to get up even though he's injured, using his powers to make his enemy levitate and dropping him from above. After the impact, the creature turns back into a statue and Jiahao falls completely defeated. Seeing that Kunyi is laughing, Li becomes furious and fires several arrows at her enemy, but he manages to deflect them all without difficulty and walks away. As soon as he leaves, Jiahao uses his last moments to ask Li to find the next wearer of the golden mask, saying that the future of the planet depends on it. In America, a boy called Charlie wakes up early in the morning and comes out of hiding, walking the streets while stealing things from people's pockets. Back in China, Li takes her father's mask to Yufu, the king of the city. Seeing the girl's sadness, the old man tells her that she must honor Jiahao and follow the path that the mask shows her, saying that only then will she find the hero she needs. As soon as he finishes speaking, a portal opens in front of her and takes her to the other side of the world, where she begins to search for the new wearer of the mask. While Li is wandering the streets, Charlie is captured by Thurman, Rizzo's bodyguard, a mobster who starts charging the boy for all the bail he paid to free him. Still, Charlie refuses to pay and Rizzo threatens him, saying he'll break both his legs if he doesn't have the money, throwing him out of the car without realizing that the boy has stolen his shoes. When he realizes this, Thurman starts chasing Charlie while Lee continues to look for the new wearer of the mask. Looking from afar, the girl sees Charlie entering an alley and points the mask at him, which lights up almost instantly. Even though she's disappointed that he's a criminal, Lee decides to take him to Yufu and saves Charlie from being captured by pulling him into the portal. When he finally reaches the other side, the boy is confronted by a trio of children who start talking about how bad he smells. Driving the cart, Lee takes Charlie inside the city gates and shows him the portal key, revealing that once they had crossed over, they ended up on the Asian continent, 4,000 years in the past. After climbing the stairs of hope, Lee takes Charlie to Yufu, who is very excited to meet him. After introducing the city, the old king says that they need to protect the Jade Sword and introduces him to his newest allies, the other heroes of the Golden Mask. After the introductions, Yufu says that the city is in danger and that if Kunyi takes the sword, he will be able to travel through space and time, dooming all of existence. Because of the great responsibility, Charlie also asks about benefits, wanting to know what his salary will be and if he will have any rights, but Yufu says he doesn't know anything about it. Since he won't be paid, Charlie refuses the invitation and starts to leave town. While looking for a portal, the boy steals fruit from some shopkeepers, but Zhu manages to get it all back and returns it to the owner, telling him he can't do it anymore. In addition to Zhu, Aesop also goes to the boy and tries to convince him to stay, saying that they need him to save humanity. Even so, Charlie still refuses and throws himself into a boat, but Zuma manages to get him back over the bridge. Zhu takes the opportunity to offer the mask and Charlie asks why he would want a mask painted gold, but Aesop corrects him, saying that the artifacts are solid gold. 
When he hears about this, the boy immediately changes his mind and says he'll help the people, but Lee says she knows what he's planning and will keep an eye on him, without realizing that Charlie has taken her portal key. Now that they have a new member of the team, the Golden Masked heroes go to Helen, Aesop's mother and the group's official cook, who feeds Charlie spicy tofu. After the unconventional meal, the heroes go to bed and Lee collects everyone's masks and puts them in the magic chest, where they are kept overnight. Before going to sleep, Charlie asks about Kunyi and Aesop tells him that Yufu created the portals to bring brilliant people from other eras to make the holy city even better. Because of these portals, Kunyi managed to invade the place and has been trying to steal the Jade Sword ever since, in order to access the Tree of Life and be able to travel between realms, dominating all civilizations. After the story, Charlie goes to sleep thinking he can wake up whenever he wants, but Lee wakes him up before dawn to start his training. Although the boy wants to learn how to fight, Lee says that first he needs to understand why he was given the mask and tries to teach him how to meditate. During the lessons, Kunyi attacks the city again and they have to skip to the practical part. With a mutant bison, the villain begins to attack the gate, but the heroes in the golden mask appear to stop him, mounted on Zhu, Lee rushes towards the mutant monster and shoots a few arrows at it, but the creature doesn't take any damage and continues to attack them. Frightened, Zhu starts to back away and lets the monster hit the gate with another horn, destroying the hinges. Not knowing what to do, Charlie puts on his mask in an attempt to make it work, but fails miserably. As Kunyi's creature takes another swing at him, the boy sees a red cloth inside the wall and decides to use it to his advantage, running over to the fabric. With the gate about to give way, the other four heroes join forces to try to stop the monster, but it doesn't suffer any damage and manages to enter the city. Now that the way is clear, the giant monster lunges at Lee, who is saved at the last second by Charlie, who uses the red cloth to lure the mutant bull to the gate. As the monster rushes at him, Charlie lets go of the sheet that falls into the beast's eye, blocking its vision and making it run full tilt towards Kunyi. In order not to get hit, the villain turns the wild bull back into a statue, standing in the middle of the road. Seeing the object, Lee says that Charlie must retrieve the statue before Kunyi does, but despite trying, he ends up tripping and falling face first to the ground. Because of this, the intruder manages to take the statue, but Charlie manages to use his powers of telekinesis to steal the object from his hands. Alone against the five, Kunyi sees no option but to retreat, causing Charlie to be hailed as the new hero of the holy city. To celebrate, Helen prepares a spicy stew for everyone. Taking advantage of his companion's distraction, Charlie tries to take the chest with the masks, but is caught by Helen, who forces him to have dinner with the others. During the meal, Charlie takes the opportunity to get to know his companions better and asks Zhu how many animals he can turn into. Zuma then explains that the powers are based on the Chinese zodiac, but that despite this, he doesn't have the courage to transform into a dragon because he's afraid of heights. Zhu denies it and says he's still improving, but Zuma says he's lying and the two start fighting, only stopping when Helen tells them to. The next morning, the group of heroes start fighting the mud golems and don't notice when Kunyi invades the city from the other side. After getting past the soldiers on the wall, the villain and his winged tiger go to the center and activate a monster that sucks in everything around it, spitting it back out in a blast of energy. Upon seeing the creature, Helen asks the children to warn the heroes while Yufu orders the guards to evacuate the citizens. Outside, Charlie and the others finish defeating the mud golems and hear the shouting inside the wall. In the center of town, Kunyi takes advantage of the confusion to go straight to the temple, but is spotted by the children, who are in charge of telling the heroes everything. On the way to the temple, Kunyi is stopped by Helen, who throws a spoon at the white tiger's head. Near the gate, the heroes are facing the monster with the powers of a black hole when the trio of children arrive to talk about Kunyi. To stop him, Lee says she'll go to him with Zhu while Charlie and the other two fight the clay troll. Seeing that it's only a lady who's blocking his way, Kunyi orders the tiger to capture her and begins to ridicule her, but Helen's plan was never to stop him, but to buy time. Just then, Lee and Zhu arrive to stop them and Kunyi decides to capture Helen as a prisoner, taking her to his fortress. Meanwhile, the three remaining heroes continue to fight the clay black hole. Observing the way the monster fights, Charlie realizes that it works like a garbage disposal and suggests throwing in something metal to make it harder to digest. To do so, Aesop picks up a massive bronze statue and tries to throw it at the monster, but it's faster and starts sucking up the heroes. To save his friends, Charlie jumps over the statue and uses his powers to throw the object into the troll's mouth, clogging up the crushing monster. Unable to shake things off, the clay golem collapses and explodes, creating a shockwave that Charlie must contain with his powers. Although the city is safe, Lee tells them what happened to Helen and the five heroes decide to rescue her. 
Before leaving, Yufu says that the path is haunted by hungry ghosts, dark creatures that feed on power. Because of this, Yufu says that they shouldn't wear their masks and Charlie makes fun of the situation, but the elder says that the ghosts consume the power of the masks and then their wearers, reaffirming that they shouldn't use the artifacts. With the masks stored in the magic chest, the group begins their journey in a cart pulled by Zhu. During the night, the group goes camping and Charlie finds Lee trying to communicate with Jiahao's spirit. Noticing the boy's presence, the girl asks him to sit down and says she's glad she was wrong, because she was sure Charlie could never be a hero. After a bit of chatting, the boy drops his cell phone and Lee sees a photo of his parents, asking what happened to the couple. Charlie then tells her that he lost his parents in a car accident and has been living alone on the streets ever since. Lee asks if he still feels that way and Charlie says he's not sure, because he likes the heroes as if they were members of his family. The next morning, they continue their journey until they reach the mountain where the hungry ghosts live. Before entering the place, Lee takes the mask from each of them and puts it in the safe, forcing Aesop to carry the cart the rest of the way. As they make their way through the place, the group begins to hear cries of despair and approaches to investigate, discovering that Kunyi's soldiers are looting a farming village, stealing food from poor families. Seeing this injustice, Zuma suggests taking the masks, but Lee refuses, saying that they will attract the attention of the ghosts and that they should concentrate on the main mission. Nevertheless, the group of heroes decide to fight without their masks and rush into action, except for Charlie, who is forbidden to leave the wagon by Lee. Even unarmed, the heroes manage to fight off the soldiers and take down most of them, causing them to retreat. To stop them from fleeing, Aesop starts running after the cart, which starts speeding towards Zuma. To prevent his friend from being run over, Aesop holds onto the wheel of the cart, which stops a few centimeters away from Zuma, but this puts him at a disadvantage and they are both captured. On top of a house, Lee arrives to save a girl and starts fighting a soldier, even though she is unarmed, and manages to knock him down. Even so, the heroes are outnumbered and soon Lee is surrounded too. In the wagon, Charlie is about to return to America with the trunk when he sees Lee being surrounded by soldiers. When he sees this, he decides to take his mask and use his powers to save his friends, which causes the hungry spirits to awaken. Despite this, Charlie manages to deal with all the soldiers on his own, saving the whole village and his friends. Even though the others congratulate him, Lee fights with Charlie for wearing the mask and asks why he was carrying the trunk. Before the boy can answer, the ghosts appear and start chasing them, forcing the heroes to flee through the bamboo forest. Halfway there, Aesop runs over a rock and knocks over the masks, so he has to go back and get the chest with his bare hands. As a result, he is captured by the hungry spirits and Charlie has to use his powers to save him, but he can't do the same with the chest. In the sea of clouds, the group climbs into the dinghy and starts rowing away, not realizing that Kunyi is watching everything from the air. After they leave, the villain takes the chest with the masks and returns to his fortress. While rowing through the clouds, the heroes in the golden mask pass close to a storm cloud and almost fall into a hurricane. Despite this, the hole is small and they manage to escape relatively easily, but end up falling into a larger one soon afterwards. Even though it takes a little more effort, they manage to get out of the tornado and sail back through the clouds, arriving at Kunyi's fortress on the other side. When they get out of the boat, the group finds Helen and Lee warns them that it's a trap, but Charlie ignores it and goes to rescue the merman. Along with him, the others also advance and end up being surrounded by Kunyi's army. While making fun of the fact that they went there without a mask, the villain calls the group stupid and says that they haven't realized that there's a traitor among them. Confused, Lee asks what he's talking about and Kunyi says she can hear it straight from Charlie. The boy then says that he really was driven by greed, but that he's gotten over it and that now his friends are what matter. Hearing this, Lee remembers that he was with the trunk at the farm and accuses him of having tried to steal all the masks. While Charlie tries to explain himself, Kunyi says it's time for action and orders his men to go after him. Being the only one still wearing a mask, Charlie tries to defeat the soldiers, but he's outnumbered and can't do it alone. Thinking about how he screwed up, the boy decides to abandon the mission and uses the key to open a portal back to his time, followed by Aesop who wants to convince him to continue. In an alley, Charlie leaves the portal and walks to his parents' old office. Instead, the boy throws the mask in a box and lies down on the sofa, not realizing that Rizzo is sitting in the chair right behind him. When he hears the mobster, Charlie even tries to run, but is stopped by Thurman, who starts looking around the place for something valuable. During his search, Thurman finds the gold mask and gives it to Rizzo, who steps on Charlie's back. At that moment, Aesop appears and Rizzo tries to go after him, but is knocked out by a blow from the merman. Seeing the monster's strength, Thurman flees and leaves the two heroes alone. Happy to see his friend again, 
Charlie is motivated to continue and decides to return to China. In the fortress of Kunyi, the heroes of the Golden Mask are about to be roasted in the furnace when Charlie arrives to save them. Despite this, Kunyi has already left for the city and they have to run to stop them. In a hurry, the quartet begins to confront the soldiers while Charlie recovers their masks, returning the artifacts to their true owners. With their powers, they manage to defeat Kunyi's henchmen and escape from the fortress, but the villain is still far ahead. Knowing that they won't be able to get there in time to stop him, the group tries to convince Zhu to use his dragon form. In the city, Kunyi unleashes some of his mud monsters on the wall and flies to Yufu. At the fortress, Charlie tells Zhu that he can't be afraid of failing forever and manages to convince him to face his fear of heights, transforming himself into a mini version of Shenlong who starts flying to the holy city. In the center of town, the children begin to be chased by Kunyi's snakes and mud golems. Trying to escape, they get on a cart and cross the city, but end up getting into an accident and are surrounded by one of the Najas. Just then, the heroes arrive and Zhu carries the snake into the air, releasing it into the air. On the ground, the other four heroes fight against the mud army, managing to defeat them all with extreme ease. In the temple, Kunyi chains up Yufu and walks to the portal, where he finally manages to get the Jade Sword. At this point, the heroes appear and try to convince him to move away from the portal, but he is now much more powerful and can resist the five without any effort. With the power of his sword, he manages to remove the mask from all the golden heroes. Feeling victorious, Kunyi orders Charlie to collect all the masks and begins his villain speech, not realizing that the boy still has his artifact. With his powers of telekinesis, Charlie manages to disarm the villain, who is held back by Aesop and Zuma. After taking the sword, the boy says that he will regret everything he has done and uses the sword to open another portal, adding to the powers of his mask to throw him into another dimension. Now that Kunyi is gone, Charlie returns the sword to King Yufu, who thanks them all, crowning them as the greatest heroes China has ever seen. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.